Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a Lenovo computer with an Intel processor, Core i5 processor, and it's running uh, what looks like a desktop operating system, but it's actually a custom version of Android called uh, Remix OS. It's from a company called Zide, and they put out a couple of devices, including their own tablet, their own TV box, and they've partnered with some Chinese companies and kind of anybody who's willing to work with them to get their software onto other devices, but starting on January 12, 2016, anybody will be able to download uh, Remix OS 2.0, put it on a USB flash drive, and boot an Intel or an AMD-based computer, most Intel and AMD-based computers from the last couple of years, should be able to run it, and you'll uh, be able to try it yourself without buying any new hardware and uh, and sort of explore the ecosystem. Now, it looks a little bit more like a desktop operating system because we've got uh, support for running apps in Windows that are resizable, can be moved. We've got a taskbar. We've got um, uh, applications like this file manager, which are really designed uh, to, uh, to let you interact with it. So uh, I'm here with David Coe, who is one of the founders of the company. And um, tell me a little bit about why Android as a desktop operating system makes sense. Um, we think the next billion people, the next frontier is going to be um, productivity for Android. You look at the history of Android, the last eight years, the last nine years, mainly focusing on consuming content. We have cell phones, we have tablets, we have TV, we have Android autos. Mainly they're all consuming content. We believe that Android, we want to take Android to the next level by adding PC functionality, PC experience into Android, that you can actually truly on the go, where your tablet can become actually replacement of your PC, replacement of your laptop, and then you can actually do real work. Right now, a lot of times, you use your phone to consume content, but then you always have to resort back to your laptop to for productivity work. Now, imagine that you can actually have your Microsoft Office, Google Docs, all those things on your tablet, keyboard, mouse, fully supported, multitasking, multi-window, all those things. This will actually truly, I think this is in, uh, 2016 is going to be a big year for Android. Now, like I said, it's got a user interface that looks like a desktop user interface. Uh, some applications are not necessarily optimized for use in this sort of mode. So what are you doing to sort of uh, encourage developers or is, is part of the idea of getting it onto as many computers as possible so developers have a reason to make sure that their apps don't act like they're on a phone when they're on a laptop? Absolutely. So uh, we, we have done a lot of work to optimize to make sure that all apps are uh, running smoothly on Remix OS. The key thing for developers is as long as you follow the Google guidelines when you're developing your Android apps, it will work on, it will complete and compatible on uh, Remix OS as well. Uh, don't do anything funky. As long as you follow the Android Google guidelines, the style guide, you will be able to run it on Remix OS as well. I mean, that said, there are certain things like when you open a web browser, you might see a mobile page unless you click a bu button. Uh, when you're editing documents, you're going to be using the mobile versions of Office and Google Docs instead of the desktop versions. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing is what I'm hearing you say? <laughs> uh, no, because it's a lot of time uh, mobile first, a lot of people are watching mobile first. You, you spend most of the time on your cell phone. Actually, there are more features on your cell phone than on your desktop nowadays. Uh, particular, so you might be familiar with your Facebook account on, a, on your on your on your Android phone. So a lot of uh, Android applications actually run very smoothly on Remix OS. So uh, Remix OS, uh, the first device was a tablet sold for about four hundred dollars. Came out in twenty fifteen. Then there was a little TV box that sold for sells now for about seventy dollars. Uh, people who backed it on a crowdfunding campaign were able to get it for even less money than that. Uh, so Tide, in addition to making software, makes hardware, but what's new here is that anybody's going to be able to download it, install it for free. Now, the version that's coming out in January is an alpha release, uh, so it's still, you're looking for people to help test it. You wouldn't necessarily recommend wiping your operating system or replacing it, Correct. Um, but the idea is to get as many people as possible using it, right? Correct. So so what's, what's the future? What's the future plan? Um, the first thing we we'll want to get as many people onto Remix Mini, uh, on Remix OS as possible. Give us feedback. We want to build a community. And then the next thing is we want to make sure that the experience, the features is just right for everyone. Uh, in the future, we want to be work as, as many partners as possible. Uh, our OS is free. Um, can, we can work with any partners on their hardware. So the next thing is going to be growing our users. Uh, and then 2016 is going to be an exciting year. And so you, you've got venture capital to keep running for a while without necessarily making any money on the software. And the operating system is always going to be free. In the future, you were, you were telling me that right. uh, there might be some other ways to make money. Yes. Um, we truly believe that if you get the software right, if you get the user experience right, the business model will fall. And uh, so we might have uh, partnerships with uh, third-party app developers, uh, uh, 
cloud backup, all, other things like that. Yeah, You're not really all, sure what it is, but... Yeah, these are all possibilities. <laughs> okay. So, um... So there's no real catch to trying out the software. Uh, you're, you're not going to start charging people for it three years no. from now. No. And, um, and so you've, you've made uh, two devices yourself. Uh, you're partnering with anybody who, uh, who's willing to produce uh, devices with your software on it. Uh, you're not just focusing on the software, though. Uh, we can expect to find more hardware from you in the future as well. Uh, yes. Um, our company has always been focusing on leading the way of coming out with new hardware. Uh, the first time, 2014, we come up with an Ultra Tablet. Uh, in 2000, uh, 2005, we come up with the Remix Mini, which is the first true Android PC. Uh, 2016, we have something exciting coming up. Uh, it's not ready to say yet, but as I said, we want to we want to lead the way in a lot of some new form factors, push Android to a new whole new level. And, and so the key distinction between what we're seeing here and what you would get on a typical uh, smartphone or tablet is, well, a lot of Android tablets might have a Bluetooth keyboard or something. Here you've got an operating system that's really designed for, uh, for keyboard and mouse input. That's why you were able to put out a little mini PC that doesn't have any touch capabilities at all, because uh, it was really designed to be used the way that a desktop is. And uh, speaking of desktops and notebooks, when you're running this version, uh, you're going to be running it on, uh, if you've got a Core i5 or a Core i3 processor, you should uh, notice much faster performance than you would get from an ARM-based processor. That said, even with a relatively inexpensive device like the Remix Mini, uh, Remix OS feels pretty fast. Uh, one thing I meant to ask you about, actually, is uh, one thing that I've noticed when using a lot of Android tablets is if you're a heavy multitasker, say you're editing a document and then uh, opening a web page and then you sort of go back and forth, you might suddenly realize that your web page closed. Or right. if you're working on a document, uh, you might lose some of your data because the way that memory is managed in Android. Correct. That doesn't seem to happen in Remix OS, right? Yes, we spend a lot of time optimizing that. Uh, we understand that in Android, a lot of times you actually close the memory management. It's very different. Uh, but now that we have seen more powerful computers, uh, better memories, more memories, uh, once you have more memories, you can actually have multitasking running at the same time. So we spend a lot of time optimizing that experience. Yeah, one, one experience that I had early on when trying to use Android uh, as a blogging platform, I would open a WordPress page and I would start to type, uh, and then I would go do a little bit of research in another window and I come back and I realized everything I typed had disappeared. Right. And when I try to do the same thing with a Remix Mini, even though it's only got two gigabytes of RAM and, right. and uh, ARM based processor, uh, it keeps that page open indefinitely, it seems yeah. like. So yeah. the memory management is a little bit different. So. so that's a quick look at uh, the Jide Remix OS, now available or soon available on. Uh, Pretty much any computer with an Intel or an AMD processor, also available on the Remix Mini uh, and the Remix Ultra Tablet, as well as a couple of other devices uh, so far. The Jide's goal for 2016 is to get it onto as many devices as possible. Uh, right now it runs off a USB flash drive that you put it on your computer, so um, you don't have to, uh, to replace your operating system to give it a try. Uh, and I should mention that it, it was a partnership with the Android x86 project that led to this. So you took uh, your user interface, your customizations, and, uh, and relied on the work that they've gotten to get the drivers and the booting and everything to work properly. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and look at uh, Jive's Remix OS at CES 2016.